Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are diving into creating a cool network layer for our project. But before we get into that, I have got some exciting news for you. If you are enjoying the course but find yourself stuck at times, I totally get it. Sometimes just grabbing the source code isn't quite enough, right? So here's the deal. I am hosting a live session where I will personally help you out with any issues you are facing in this course. Now here's the fun part. All I ask for is 200 likes on this video. Easy, right? Just drop a comment below saying you are interested in the live session and be sure to share this video to help us hit that 200 likes goal. Once we reach it, I'll share the live session details in the community section. So show some love, hit that like button, comment and let's make this happen. I cannot wait to connect with you all in the live session. Now let's jump into the network layer tutorial. So far in our project, we have this app module. We created this features module and inside this features module, we have auth. We also created theme module. Now this is the time to create a network module and we will use this module whenever we have to make a network call. So what I will do is again, I will go to file and I will select new module. And this time we will not create an Android library, but we will create a Java or Kotlin library because this module will help us to make network requests. And that is why this module can be created without using any Android specific dependencies. And that's why I am making a Java or Kotlin library. I will name it network. Again, we will change the package name and I will name the package as dev.pilalkhan.minitails and then network. The language that I am going to use is Kotlin and we will use the Kotlin DSL for build.gradle file. Now hit finish. Now here you can see we have the network module and inside this module we have main and we have this package. Inside this package we have this my class so we can delete this class. Now we will open Gradle scripts and here you can see we have build.gradle.kts and it is for my network module. So first open this file. Now we can delete this block as we already defined this configuration in our default config function. So we do not need to define this block whenever we define a Java or Kotlin module. So I will delete this. Now for this network module, I am going to add Kotlin serialization plugin because it is needed for making network calls. So here I will write ID and then my Kotlin serialization plugin ID. And I will get this ID from my Gradle version catalog. And this is Kotlin serialization that we already defined inside our version catalog file. Now I will add some dependencies. So we have a bunch of Ktor dependencies in this module. And I already told you that I'm going to use Ktor for making network requests in this project. So our build.gradle is ready, just sync the project now. And once the sync is done, we will create a new class. And we will name this class as Minitails HTTP Client Builder. So here I'm going to use builder pattern to create my HTTP Client Builder class. And with the help of this class, we will build the HTTP Client that we will use to perform network calls. I hope everything is clear to you. So first we will create a class named Minitails HTTP Client Builder. Inside this class, first we will define some values. The first one is URL protocol. And you can see this URL protocol is coming from the Ktor library. So make sure you are using this URL protocol. The same way I will define host and port because the type of this port is int that is a primitive type, we cannot use late init modifier. So what I will do is I will delete this late init and I will assign a default value to port. So what we can do is 
we can make the port default as 8080. Now I will define setter functions. So let's define a setter function for protocol first. So we have fun protocol and we will provide protocol to this function. It is URL protocol and this function will return the instance of this mini tails HTTP client builder. So here we can simply write equals to and then we can use the apply block and inside apply we can write this dot protocol equals to protocol. That means we are assigning this protocol value to this protocol late init var. The same way we will create functions for host and port. Now we can create an instance of this class then we can call protocol host and port and finally we will call build function to build the HTTP client. So here I will define a build function and this function will return HTTP client and make sure you are using the HTTP client from Ktor library. Now this function will return an HTTP client. So here we can write return HTTP client and we will use this function that is from Ktor library. So we have HTTP client for the HTTP client. We are going to use CIO and you can see we have the CIO from Ktor client engine CIO. So make sure you're using this one only. So we have CIO and then we will pass a trailing Lambda for configuration and here we will configure our HTTP client. So the first thing that I will do is I will make expect success to true. That means if I get any error from the API call, my HTTP client will throw an error. So here I will write expect success to true. And then I will set up the engine using engine block. So I will set the endpoint. And for endpoint, I will define some values. So we have keep a lifetime. I will set it to five seconds, then connect time out. So if after five seconds, we don't have any response from the server, that means it is timeout. And we will set up connect attempts to three. That means it will try three times. So we have configured our HTTP client engine. Now I will set up some default request parameters. And to do this, I can use the default request block that we have inside our HTTP client config. So inside this block, we can write default request like this and we can set up the default request. The first thing that I will set up here is the default URL. So I will use URL block and inside this block first I will set the protocol. So we will use this dot protocol. Now here this is referring to URL builders protocol. So we will set this dot protocol to our classes protocol that is this protocol and because we are inside the scope of URL builder we cannot access this protocol directly by writing it like this. So what we can do is we can write this at the rate our class name and then dot protocol. Now it is referring to this protocol here. The same way we will define host and port and I just realized that writing this here is not necessary because we are already inside URL builder scope and it is little bit confusing. So I will delete this from here. Now it looks good. So we have set up protocol host and port for default URL of the request. And this is basically our base URL. Now I will set up a default header for all the requests. So I will use the header function. So we have header, then HTTP headers dot content type. So I have to set the content type to application JSON. Now we have set up our default request. Now what we will do is we will set up content negotiation because we are going to send and receive JSON in our network request. So I will write install and in this function, I will pass content negotiation 
and again in the trailing lambda i will configure content negotiation so first i will call json function and i will define json configuration here and i will set the pretty print to true then i will make it lenient and this means if we have little syntax error in our json then it will ignore it and i will also ignore unknown keys if there are any so this is my json configuration now finally i will install auth and here i am going to use bearer authentication and when the user will log in then we have to send the auth key for all the other urls that requires authentication and that's why we have to install auth here so i will write auth inside the auth configuration i will call bearer function and inside bearer i will load the tokens but right now we don't have any tokens and we have not saved tokens so what i will do is for now i will delete this part and later when we save the authentication token to the local storage i will put the bearer part here so for now we are not sending any token or what we can do is we can simply write here load tokens and here we can return tokens for now i will pass empty access and refresh token the same thing we can do with refresh tokens so here we have one more block refresh tokens and here also we can pass the same thing so we have install auth finally we will install logging because we want to see the network logs for debugging and for that we have to install logging so i will write logging here and i will define logger equals to object and i will define an implementation here this is not logging but it is logger so we have to use the logger interface now we will implement the function that is log function and here inside the log function we will log the message and here i can simply write print ln and then message not log so we have this message logged for the log level i will define log level dot all so it will log all the information available for our network request and we have our minitales http client builder ready now we can use this minitales http client builder what we can do is we can write val builder equals to minitales http client builder and then dot port set a port let's say 8080 and then set host let's say some host and then protocol let's say we have url protocol http and then finally we will call the build function and this build function will return an http client and with the help of that http client we will perform network calls so i think that's all for this video if you have any confusion or question you can leave the comments below and in the next video we will use this http client builder to define our request handler so thanks for watching everyone if you are interested in the live session make sure this video touches the mark of 200 likes thanks for watching this is bilal khan now signing off